It is 5.30, if we could please stand for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, July 11, 2023, the time being 5.30 p.m. The meeting of the Greensburg Board of Works is called to order. This time, please silence all electronic devices. To comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, the city has its participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that's available on the table in the back of the room. Amy, would you please call the roll? Jamie Kane? Here. Rodney King? Here. Glenn Tebbe? Here. Lindsay Joe? Here. And Mayor Joshua Marsh? Present as well. Um, one quick note on the agenda. I know that the um, chiefs are responding to something, so I ask that we just move McNeely uh, down to the end in case he can't make it in time, if that's acceptable. A motion that we make that adjustment to the agenda. Second. Motion's been made. Second. All those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay, perfect. Um, you all should have received a copy of the minutes from June 13, 2023. Any edits, additions, or corrections? Did you get the updates that you wanted? Yeah. Perfect. If not, take a motion to approve those as presented. So moved. Second. Motion's been made by Glenn, seconded by Lindsay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Uh, first item and only item of old business is the sale of the Dodge Charger that we tabled last month. I sent you all sort of a memo that sort of outlined, I've had the mechanic look at it, uh, relatively minimal amounts of dollars in repair and then also the insurance company did state that it's pretty common for airport authorities to have courtesy cars that people that are flying into the airport can use. Um, mm -hmm. We would still have a few boxes to check and things to work on on that, but he didn't seem to think that would be any big issue. I do think that this would be a good amenity to add to the airport as we welcome business class travelers um, to the community. I have some friends that are private aviation pilots and they have ensured me that um, retired police cars are a very common uh, form of transportation when they arrive at an airport. So it isn't something like we need new vehicles for that and maybe just part of our process as we go through. Um, I would ask that we uh, retain that and that we um, allow the airport authority to use it as part of their operations. I'm gonna ask Chris how we, he would like us to phrase that motion so that we do it properly. That's what I was gonna suggest that we reject the bids I don't know if that's proper or not. Well, the, the bids were all, sorry. The bids were all complying, so I, I don't know that we can truly reject them outright. I do think that, um, I, I would say the proper verbiage is to move to withdraw the authorization to sell the vehicle and retain it. So essentially it was, it was offered, it was noticed, um, but uh, an alternative, I would say due to the identification of an alternative use, uh, the, the motion would be to withdraw the I can make that motion. Thank you. Motion has been made to withdraw the offer of sale. Second. Second by Rodney. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Perfect. Thank you. Up next, John Bryant. Oh. Just real, real quick under old business, I maybe should have added it under a minute. Just a point of information. Uh, last meeting we had a long discussion about uh, the grass ordinance and making perhaps making some adjustments with that. Just wanted to be, I, that's what I was going to make note of is that you know, it's, it's our recommendation that it, the council has that under consideration to to amend the ordinance uh, from three to one year, I believe. Just a point of information. Sorry, I wasn't trying to, I, it's on the agenda tonight. Yes, sir. No, it's been made. Uh, John Bryant with the Veritas Group is here this evening for our update from the Municipal Complex. Good evening, John. Good evening, Mayor. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. My pleasure.
Okay, well, good evening, board. Uh, John Bryan, Tavares Group, here to give a brief update on the municipal campus projects for the street department, as well as the fire station. So I went ahead and put together something a little bit different this month, and we'll use this going forward as far as the presentation goes to make things a little bit more clear and easy to read and, and follow. So we'll keep this this template and the way that we're doing these things here, here moving forward. So we'll go ahead and start similar to what we've done in the past with maybe we, one second here. With the site work update. So this photo, this drone photo was taken last Thursday. Um, so things have progressed a little bit since then. Um, not a whole lot, but you'll you'll notice some updates here as I go through this. So the retention pond, as we discussed last month, is nearly complete. It is at depth and size. They're working on the, the fine grading. Currently, they've also started to install the storm, which is ahead of schedule. So they've started over here on this corner, um, installing the, the storm, and then they'll work their way back. Um, as mentioned, the building pads are completed for both the fire station and the street department. They've been proof rolled, even with the rain we've received. They're still rock solid. So. There's not any foreseen of any need for chemical treatment for that per the testing reports that have been done. Um, and then again, storm sewer started today, which is fantastic. That's about a week ahead of schedule right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump in here to the fire station specifically. So I sniff this um, photo from the drone video. This is the um, site for the fire station. So as you can see, stone has been placed by Shooty, um, basically in all areas that are drive areas for the apparatus as well as the shared parking space and the street department spot. So I'd say about 60% of the stone is put down currently. Um, this area here in the middle is where the fire station structure will sit. Um, they are expected to start those footers um, next week for that. So they'll start digging for footers and then the, the city will do their inspections as we, as we go along on that. And then structural steel is still on schedule to start the second week of August. Um, once we start moving along with foundations. So Chief Sturmer and I have been putting together um, equipment orders for some of the equipment in order to delay any inflation costs as well as any procure procurement lead time issues. So we have procured a good amount of that equipment already that will either be held at the uh, manufacturer's warehouse or on site in the south um, um, storage barn. So those are moving along in order to save some costs. Um, we did have a meeting, uh, Mayor um, Katie in our office and Chief and Mark at the uh, Business Furniture and COE showrooms so the folks that we got an RFP from for the furniture. Um, so they, they've been working on revisions. They're expected to have those back this week in order for us to narrow it down to pick um, one of those two firms in order to uh, procure all of our furniture for us. So again, we saw about a 60% cost savings um, in doing that, which is, which is fantastic. Um, as far as any procurement items, the switch gear has been ordered and we're seeing hefty lead times on all of those. So we've done quick ships in order to get all of those procured and on time. Um, so those have been placed and then we're still waiting on the generator submittal, um, which won't affect anything with completion um, if it is late. Um, that'll just be something that comes after the fact. So we're still working through that um, currently with Meyer Agent as well. Um, moving on here to the street department update. Um, so here's a photo of the street department site. Um, Runabom is expected to mobilize tomorrow morning, so I spoke with them on the phone just prior to this meeting, so they'll be out most likely tomorrow morning at around 6 or 6.30. Um, and they plan to start on their foundations and footers. They'll hit the ground running fairly quickly as early as the beginning of this week or, or, or the end of this week to beginning of next. Uh, similar to the fire station, proof roll is passed. Stone is set on the drive areas, as you can see, or most of them underlaid with a, a geotextile fabric. And then same with the FF&E &E, um, that goes for the fire station as well. Similar lead time issues, their MDP, their switch gear is not quite as large as the fire, so we're not seeing as hefty of lead time issues there um, for the street department, but still something that we are monitoring as well. And I'll take us into budget and the schedule update. Um, so as discussed in prior updates, the GMP was set at that 19908. There has been no change in budget. Um, all of the alternates were accepted and fell within that amount, which is fantastic when we receive bids. Um, so things are things are looking fantastic from that from that standpoint. And then the project does still remain on budget or excuse me, to remain on schedule to complete in the spring of 2024. So we'll go ahead and jump into this drone video and then we can address any questions after the fact. 
So it'll take about a minute to get through this. You guys can look through and see the updates um, with the retention pond, as well as the stone and the sites for each. There's quite a bit more utilities. They've had almost all their structures, um, water, pipe, a lot of their off-site um, infrastructure utilities are currently on site right now. Steel's on site. Um, a lot of the procurement items that we've been trying to get ahead of are currently delivered already. So that's great news. And again, this was taken last Thursday, so things have progressed a little bit with storm. Um, the biggest thing is is material delivery um, that you'd notice a difference in if you went out there right now. There's still water being held. They're pumping that off um, right now, but again, the site is, is still part of the rock right now, which is great. So I'll go ahead and pause this here. Are there any questions that I can help answer? You mentioned the switch gear delay on the fire department. Is yeah. So if that is delayed, does that delay construction on certain things, or can they move forward on and work around it? So there's it about a, without a quick ship item, there's about a 70-week lead time for that year. Um, so the, the what we're looking at now is about a year um, from when they placed the order, which was last week. So we think we're going to get it in time. The issue is, is if we don't, what do we get? So we're looking into rentals, Siemens is... Um, They've got options for us to put in as a temporary unit that we can run off of until our permanent power comes. Uh, but it's still something that we're addressing, but we're staying on top of just in case we don't want to not be able to open the projects due to switch gear. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Chief uh, McNeely, we moved you to the bottom. So. Um, up next, Zeke Smith, wastewater superintendent, with a couple of items. First items, the sludge truck quote. Good evening, Zeke. Good evening, board. Mayor. Uh, a couple of <coughs> items on the agenda here. I'll jump into the, the sludge truck quotes. Quick uh, backstory for some information for you. We do currently have two sludge trucks at the plant. One is a 1983, one is a 1989. Um, coming up on 40 years old, and they're definitely kind of showing their age. Both in current uh, working order, and they, and they do support the plant, but both also have the problems. So uh, both trucks have a few phantom leaks that we can't seem to fix and can't get parts to fix. Um, they're, they don't like to start when it's cold. In fact, we had some cold weather over winter, and they struggled. So um, anyway, they've, they, have, uh, they have served the city for almost 40 years, and they have did a great job. But unfortunately, they're nearing the end of their lives, which kind of brings me to this uh, quotes here. So I'm looking to purchase a, a new sludge truck. I did uh, send out three formal quotes to a few companies. Sent one out to Best Equipment out of Indy, one to uh, Truck Country also out of Indy, and then one here locally to uh, Shirks International. Did receive back two of the three quotes, uh, one from Shirks uh, and one from Best Equipment. Truck Country could not get me a quote. They Basically their reason was they have some pricing changes coming up next month, also into kind of September, and they just couldn't uh, commit to a quote. So I didn't get two of the three. We'll go ahead and review those. Uh, the best equipment quote uh, came in at 221,000. Uh, these, so when I sent this out in email, essentially it was an apples to apples. I had some specifications that we wanted at the plant as far as the size of the truck and uh, how many horsepower and what size tank. So they all kind of quoted this the same. Um, so the 221,000 was for best equipment. What was interesting is though is the lead time on that. They really couldn't commit to a date. Uh, he pretty much said six months to 18 months. He was hoping sometime maybe next year, probably about a year out. That was for that one. And then for Shirks International, they came in a little more cost effective at 205,000. Good news there is uh, they said they could have that truck to me by the end of the year. They committed to that and even as early as October, which is great news because I would not want to go through another cold winter trucks. So, um, the intention is to retire one of those trucks, then get a new one, and then kind of see where we go from there. So uh, with that being said, I would suggest that we uh, purchase the truck with a Shirks International for 205000 with a lead time of potentially as early as October, and this is a budget. It, was, it wasn't like our capital plan, is that where it was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any 
questions for Zeke on that? I know it's something that's been on his list since he's gotten here. So yeah, for sure. So we've we've had a few issues out of those trucks. So they've they've uh, they did great, but they're nearing the end of their life. So. Good news is you get it sooner than you thought. That was great news, I thought. So I was very happy to hear that because most anything we order when it comes to pumps or valves or it, it's literally a year out on most things, if not sometimes two years. So to think we could get it this year was kind of a blessing in disguise. So to definitely take that. I'll set the motion to approve for the Shirks um, model for 205000 Second. Motion has been made by... Lindsay, second by Jamie. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Next item is the Hillside Stormwater. So another uh, quote here. As you guys know, we were over there on Hillside Drive about three weeks ago. We had a couple of phantom uh, sinkholes on the south side of Hillside Drive. They were kind of along the roadway in the grass. We dug that up. Uh, there was some broken plumbing there. We made kind of a spot repair. Uh, we did notice while we were there, there was some broken plumbing under the street. We made a pretty cost-effective repair and decided to kind of monitor that line to see how active that was and then how much discharge is actually coming from there into the little creek there just kind of south of there. There was some conflicting stories of how much flow that was receiving, so we didn't want to get too crazy with the repair if it wasn't flowing out of there adequate enough to cause more problems. So we've had some rain here as of late and that thing is flowing. I've got some video of it as well. So with that being said, we need to go ahead and make that repair under the street or that's going to cause us some street issues in the very near future. So this quote essentially encompasses uh, digging us up about 100 feet across the southeast side of Hillside, going all the way across to the edge of the asphalt, putting in an inlet, and then back filling that with granular stone, uh, filling that with flowable field, and topping that with asphalt. So uh, this quote essentially encompasses that repair. A couple items to note on that. Um, your crew and, and the Mark's crew, the street department, worked on the west side of the road Yes. Northwest side of the road in house and did a pretty extensive part of that kind of reinforcing and I don't know if the rip wraps in yet or not, but I think partially. So that was done in house with internal crews, which was good. That was on our list. Um, at the beginning of the year we sort of laid out three or four projects. Mm -hmm. This project was on there, it was budgeted for thirty thousand. Um, we did an emergency dig with him because of the sinkhole in the yeah. in the road or on the road. Yeah. That was like twenty five hundred. Yeah. 15, 1800 or something. So like we're still yeah. under that, um, but we're also getting more of the project than we did because we did some of it in house. There's another piece to this too, right? That we may not have to actually go the full 95 feet if we find good tile after that. Is that correct? Correct. We won't go all the way across unless we need to. If we find maybe halfway across it's in good working condition and it's not broken, then we'll stop wherever that <clears throat> good pipe exists. But if it's in any shape that we saw so far, it was slowly crumbling. All the way up to it so we'll, we'll go until we hit good stuff so it could be less it's depending on the you know, what kind of shape it's in so well this price takes care of the total total prop total project right correct if it if it actually goes all the way across the road yeah. right i understand that yeah it needs to be done i would move approval of the uh Contract with, uh, diesel excavating for 25 Motion has been made by Glenn. Second. Seconded by Rodney. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. Thanks, guys. Zeke, before you leave, I want to take a moment and commend your crews. Your crew, Zeke's crews have been uh, very busy since the July 4th holiday, including a full work day on the 4th with issues on Franklin Street and more on Franklin and now on Broadway. So uh, many thanks to them and uh, for being here and answering the phone and being a part of the team. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And to Zeke. Zeke's always there, too. So it's not just Zeke's team. Uh, Ron May, City Engineers, got a stormwater fee appeal for us. Good evening, Ron. Good evening. Uh, you did, within the past month, receive an appeal of a stormwater fee. The appeal is located at 1445 North Michigan Avenue, which is the property I think more commonly referred to as BCA. It is the industrial property on the um, 
southwest side of Michigan Avenue opposite Moscow Road intersection. Um, I'm a little unclear. Let me back up just a little bit. So really all I typically see is the form that you all have been provided. Those uh, are on the utility office website. People fill them out and send them in. So I don't always know a lot of the history of, of what the appeal is. Um, and to refresh your memories, an appeal can be based on the class of the property or on the impervious area, the number of ERUs assigned. Um, the property in question is an industrial parcel with improvements, so it was correctly classified as class four. And the impervious area was checked and found to be in agreement with the area that has been invoiced for that property. There are no other reasons for appeal of the stormwater fee other than those two. Uh, the recommendation is that the appeal be denied. They didn't even provide a reason as to why they thought it should just be appealed. They just said, we appeal. Um, it, the reason they provided, the building is built at a flat rate. Ownership is looking to appeal, receiving credit, or a reduced rate of and on usage. Right, but it doesn't say we disagree with the impervious exactly. area or the classification or anything. It just says we appeal. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we, well, I, 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 we got to do this. Do we, do we make the motion to approve the appeal and then vote it down? Or do, do we make the motion to not approve the appeal? I would make the motion to accept the recommendation denying the appeal. Okay. That's the motion I'll make. Motion's been made to accept the recommendation to deny by Jamie, second by Lindsay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Perfect. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Up next, Scotland Reinhold, who is interning with us this summer, has put together her proposal for her summer project. Um, while Scotland's getting all of that set up, uh, it's been a great pleasure to have her with us. We're about halfway through our year, uh, summer with her, and uh, she's been working very diligently with this and a lot of other things in our office. So good evening, Scotland. Changes, keep changes. It went blank on my screen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Title slide. My computer shut off. I can't see this. 
Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Good evening, my name is Scotland Reinhold. The intern project that I have chosen for the summer is renovations to the city park. I will be sharing these plans and our cost estimate with you all, and I'm happy to answer any questions as we go. First, I will share the primary goals of this project and motivations behind it, then go into more detail about the focus areas of the park, and finally discuss the projected budget for the entire project. Instead of building something completely new, the goal of this project is to better and improve upon what already exists, which is updating and modifying existing structures and equipment. The second goal is to make this space more accessible um, and create easier transitions between spaces that in the moment present challenges for people with wheelchairs and walkers. And lastly, to build upon the family-oriented space by adding some creative elements such as game tables and overall upgrades. <clears throat> this slide is a graphic that shows the area we are focusing on and what it currently looks like. This is the southeast section of the park facing Park Road. And to the left, you can see the gravel area with the picnic tables spread out around it. And to the right is the horseshoe pits. And there's also some photos that you have on your um, papers as well to give you a better visual. Our area of focus has three main sections. The first is the picnic table area, and we will be adding new picnic tables, which vary in style, but they will be concrete. We will be removing the gravel from the area and installing a concrete pad in its place. And we will also be adding new metal trash cans and planters containing low maintenance perennial flowers, um, just to give the area a fresh look. And we will also be redesigning the horseshoe pits. At the moment, they are currently just two large sand mounds with stakes in the ground, and over time they've shifted and they don't really align with each other anymore. So we would like to completely get rid of those, redesign and upgrade to concrete, and we will also be cutting the pits down to three instead of four, just to make the best use of our space, and also to prepare for the park road project in a couple of years. <coughs> and finally, shelter number two, we would like to give a fresh coat of paint and we're looking into a volunteer group that may be interested in painting the building as a project. There have already been several groups presented to us that may be interested in doing that, so we're gonna look into that further, and I think it should go well. Because the concrete tables are one of the more pricey items, this shows the styles and types of tables we plan on purchasing. We would buy one square game table with two stools and another with four. You can see them in the top middle section. Um, the reason for one of each is just to have a little bit more variation and give some people some choice where they'd like to sit. Also, the table with two stools allows for wheelchair access, and the one with four just allows large groups and families to sit together and play chess. We would also be purchasing two round tables and six rectangle tables, two of which are also wheelchair accessible. After all of these improvements, this is our proposed new layout. You can see the horseshoe pits have been cut down to three over on the right hand side and the image on the bottom of that shows our design inspiration which I got from the Horseshoe um, National Horseshoe Association website and it's going to be built to the correct specifications and parameters um, and then over to the left you can see the concrete pad the tables on top uh, we will be purchasing more than those eight but they just show where those will be and the gravel around it will be gone and will be grass <clears throat> and finally, we've made it to the fun stuff, money. Um, this slide just breaks down the cost of the items we'd be purchasing, labor for concrete, and some contingency funds as well. You can see the most expensive um, thing we have on there is concrete work, and um, that's at 36000 And second is the picnic tables. We also have a 10% increase for those contingencies, and our total estimate is around $85,000. I am seeking approval to work with the mayor in getting this project moving, and I'm asking for approval to this in an amount not to exceed $85,000. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to share all of this with you, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. It's been this out of edit. Yeah, it's the same line that we've used for them in the past, and it is within the budgeted line item for them. So, the question, one of the questions I have, sounds like a great project. I'm, 
it, I'm sure it needs updating. I know it needs updating, so <clears throat> I think that's wonderful. Um, one of the questions I have is the parks, I, the parks department, I know, maintains the um, park space, and I thought that they were also responsible for equipment and other, I know that we own the property, and that there's a, you know, there's not a county park board or whatever, it's, it's a county park board. Um, so, uh, enhancing the community with some edit funds, I think, is appropriate. Um, but I just was, I'm just curious as to, um, has this, have you checked with the Parks Department, one, two, I guess, what responsibility, this is something we're doing over and above, we have no responsibility for the equipment there that's there now, is that correct or not? Correct, so we do, so it is a county agency, but we do have a joint, like the city has appointments to the Parks Board, mm -hmm. um, to which I'm also a member, and Scotland was unable to attend our last meeting, but Teresa and Scotland have been in contact and gone through and walked it and talked about it, and um, the Parks Board was supportive of these okay. improvements being made. They are above and beyond any commitment we have to the Parks Department, as have been our other projects. Right, I noticed over, you know, over here on North Park and all that, right? North Park, you could say, yes, yeah, so the game pads and, and what the Mayor's Youth Council is doing is outside the scope of that. We, we did the infrastructure, because typically we do yeah, the infrastructure. Um, outdoor Fitness Park, you know, is something that we did to, in, you know, in, intensify or, or better the parks, but it's not a requirement. Um, we also don't provide funding to the Parks Department um, outside of the taxes that we pay as citizens of Decatur County. So when um, Scotland and, and others have wanted to make those investments, I don't think that that's, it's a way to support the parks right. and, and make improvements in them. Uh, you had made the comment that this was actually something on Teresa's list of areas to improve and you just happen to also agree with that, is that correct? Yes. We had a conversation about it and she was looking to make improvements in this park in the next couple of years as well and shift the focus from some of the other parks to this one. There isn't anything in Scotland's proposal that requires us to solicit bids. Um, we will get quotes. So that's her request is that we, this body is accepting to that plan and that we can work together um, to fulfill that. If that's acceptable, I would entertain a motion to approve us to continue on this project. And obviously the claims would come through, but bids won't. Just a point of clarification. Second. Motion's been made by Lindsay, second by Jamie. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thanks, Colin. Thanks Thank for you. all the hard work on this. Thanks Thank for you. your patience with the technical difficulties. <laughs> Not a problem. Up next, uh, Lydia Acre is interning with our clerk treasurer's office this year. As you can see, our intern class is growing, uh, which is great. So Lydia, um, good evening. Thanks for joining us. You have a policy change. Yes. Good evening, Board of Works members. My name is Lydia Acre, and I am an intern for the city clerk treasurer's office. This summer, I have been working closely with Julie Nobby to create a driver selection criteria policy. Having a driver selection criteria policy will address gaps in our handbook to make clear who qualifies to drive a city vehicle, the policy for when someone does not qualify, and how we should use employees' motor vehicle record checks to determine this. Our driver selection criteria policy has two categories of violations and resulting discipline, Class A and Class B. Employees should have no Class A violations within the past three years and three or fewer Class B violations or chargeable accidents within the past year. Descriptions of what is a Class A and what is a Class B violation are listed in the policy. Resulting discipline for the violations is based off of recommendations from Gladfelter Insurance. <clears throat> Employees with a driving record in violation of this policy will be informed of their loss of driving privileges and its duration in writing. Employees will not be able to requalify to be a driver until their MVR meets the criteria. For example, if an individual receives a Class A violation, they will not be able to requalify for three years. Employees with a Class A violation will also have to complete an, an approved driver improvement or training program and recomplete the city's driving training. Thank you all for your consideration of this matter, and we are happy to answer any questions. 
I guess maybe the only question I have for you, I, I, I don't know that I have any issues with the policy. I was just going to ask, do we look at other communities to see what their policies were? So. Yes, so we used multiple resources. One of the main ones, um, Julie is subscribed to SHRM, which is Society for Human Resources Management, and I was able to find a lot of sample policies on there to compare, and this is a template taken from another person who had created a policy and then tweaked for our needs, and we also um, took information from what Gladfelter recommended to us. I, I agree, I think it's appropriate that we have this, obviously. <clears throat> I'm kind of surprised we didn't have something already, but I understand that we probably didn't. Um, my question I have, <clears throat> under the, the re-qualification process, you mentioned that um, the person would be um, approved driver improvement training program, and I, it, that's something I'm sure we're going to get from somewhere uh, that we can identify. And then, in addition, they must recomplete. <clears throat> not sure about that word, but re the city safe driving safe training, city driving safe training. This wasn't referenced before, so uh, do we have that program now? Is there something that you're referencing specifically there, or? Um, yeah, so at the end when I'm talking about the city driving training, I'm referencing the training videos that every new hire must complete, and some of those are about driving safety, so they would okay. have to rewatch those videos. And then for an approved um, driver improvement training program that I reference, with the Class A violations that that's in reference to, license suspension is common, so any program they would have to complete through the BMV would be accepted by us. Um, additional training modules through our city training programs, such as AIG or IPEP, would also be acceptable forms of training programs. And you will identify those. Okay. Is this policy relying on um, like the good faith of the employee coming forth with information about violations or are there um, driving records that are kind of ran off every year? Yes, so every year we will check their motor vehicle record and this policy is in place more to ensure that we have like criteria for who cannot be a city driver, but our handbook actually says whenever an employee is cited for an infraction while on duty or arrested for any misdemeanor or felony, the employee shall report this matter. Um, and this is page 53, it also says citations for moving traffic violations or arrests or for misdemeanors or felonies which occur during an employee's off-duty hours must be reported to the department head in writing within five calendar days. So it does state in our handbook that employees should be coming forward and then this NVR check is a backup for us to make sure if there is someone who hasn't come forward that we catch that and that they aren't driving. Do you have anything in the disciplinary policy? So if we were to find somebody that didn't report that when we did the check, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the handbook it says um, they can be punished up to and including termination of employment. Well done. Thank you. Yes. Any further questions for Lydia? If not, would entertain a motion to approve her good work and presentation as presented. Second. Motion been made by Rodney, second by Glenn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that was very complete. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, two items for you this evening. I've included in your packet some photos and um, sort of an outline for a discussion surrounding some improvements at the airport terminal. Uh, this is property of the city of Greensburg. It falls under our purview. It is part of our portfolio. As we approach the runway completion and expansion, as mentioned kind of earlier in this meeting, having those amenities and um, a welcoming place to have people who are flying in, both business class and visitors and pilots, I believe it would be in our best interest to um, add, a, add a touch of paint and uh, some extra love to the terminal, which has been widely disregarded for so many years. and. Um, I think paint, carpet, trim, um, an HVAC system, and, and some TLC and front doors that aren't rusted out 
um, may go a long ways in some furniture. So I've proposed to you, um, I did uh, reach out to Hooten Renovations, who works on smaller projects like this in our community. Um, he did go out, look at it, talk about it, work through it, did provide you a quote for $18,788.84. Um, I would recommend that we do go with him. He's able to get it done before our ribbon cutting uh, in September, which I think is very helpful. And I, I think we can use some river boat dollars for this, those dollars coming to our community um, from outside. I think it's kind of a good use to spruce up a piece of our investment uh, as a property portfolio, but then also as a front door to the community. So I would ask for that, and then I've also asked for a, a $5,000 allowance to uh, replace the furniture in there. So I've included photos. Happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I think that's much needed as a, as a front door. Mr. Tebby went out and, and looked at the area and encouraged me to do so, and I did. And I think we are both in agreement that some work definitely needs to be done to spruce up the area to make it more welcoming to our guests. Is that a motion? That is a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have comments or anything on, on that? If not, I need a second, please. I'll second. Second by Glenn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Perfect. Thank you. Um, second item I have included is a request um, through the Decatur County Community Hospital Foundation. As you are all aware, they are uh, constructing their rehabilitation center there at the corner of Montgomery and Lincoln. And the construction of that replaced what was the Flakes building and, and the Sears Heating and Cooling building, and there are driveways and, and different access points that fed those properties that are no longer going to be in service. The foundation is, in, is the arm responsible for raising funds for that project, hence that's why the request comes through them. They have asked that we uh, provide funding to them to replace the sidewalk that is in front of their new building to eliminate the dips in the driveways and, and where they've put lines in. This does fall inside of our right of way. Um, it is something that maybe isn't always in our purview that we go in and do sidewalks, but I do think it's a good opportunity for us to assist with that project. Um, it also assists in bettering publicly available infrastructure, so I think that that seemed like a reasonable request from them, um, of us, and I think it would be a good opportunity for us to continue to support the hospital um, with that donation through the foundation. Any questions? I will have them make sure that they work with Ron on ADA compliance at our intersection. That would be our most concerning point of interconnectivity there. And um, funding would come from? I proposed in our memo for riverboat funding. Um, there is money available for both of these projects we've just discussed. I would maybe ask that we don't corner ourselves directly into that, as I may find other funding that we could use from other funds this year. Uh, but let's use that maybe as our definite approved backstop, if that's acceptable. The project there does need to be, it needs to be one, one uh, sidewalk and not sidewalks and driveways and what have you. Um, so yeah, I, I can see that we can uh, support this at this time, so I would be in favor of it. I don't know what my colleagues think. I'll second it. To the foundation, technically, so I do not think an abstention is necessary. I'm sorry. the The question was whether Lindsay needed to abstain based upon her relationship with the hospital, but because it's a request and a uh, involvement with the foundation and not the hospital itself, I don't think that an abstention is necessary. If you would like to abstain, you're more than welcome to. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Perfect. I will notify them. Thank you very much. Okay, Chief McNeely. Good evening, board. Apologize for my tardiness. 
So the first thing that we need to talk about would be the public sale of a forfeited vehicle. Back in 2000, our officers investigated a case in which we were able to, or we uh, did a forfeiture of some funds, uh, this vehicle and some property. Um, in the agreement through the courts, there was a judgment for us to receive those. Uh, there was a three year um, grant of use um, for that vehicle. And then at the end of that three years, the vehicle has to be sold. And the funds that are garnered from that sale uh, are dictated how they're paid out. Um, we checked with legal counsel on this and we believe the way we normally sell a vehicle, uh, like what we have been done recently with the Dodge Charger, what we've done with some of the utility trucks and stuff like something like that, uh, fulfills our requirements for sale. Um, so there would not be a public reading, it would just be an open, this is the last date we're going to take um, bids and then we would just open them privately, I guess, or here at City Hall and, and accept whatever the highest bid is, correct? Yes. Yeah. And then the clerk treasurer, I assume, would be our financier, take care of cutting the checks where they need to go. So and, I would, and, and I would note, in addition to what the chief is saying, it's all statutorily defined under the Civil Forfeiture Act. Uh, so it's, it's not a, there's, there's not gray area. This is this is how you do it. <laughs> so, we just need a motion to approve, or are you just or, or are we probably just a motion to approve the the way that we're selling it. Yeah, I'll take a motion. No, I would say the, the language would be a motion <laughs> to approve sale pursuant to the Civil Forfeiture Act. That's the motion I made. <laughs> Thank you. You're speaking for me a lot tonight. Motion's been made by Jamie. Second. Second by Rodney. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Then the second item would be um, securing a date uh, the last week of August for uh, officer interviews. Um, Glenn and I spoke the other day at the ribbon or the groundbreaking about um, how many we'll have. We don't know yet. The process is still open. What I'd like to do is just secure a date initially, and then if we looks like we're going to have more than three, I don't think we will. We might have four then we can start talking about if we need to do an additional date. But this would hopefully get us uh, in a decision prior to the September meeting, uh, the second week of September. So, if you want to look at your calendars and let me know what works that week. You're looking at the week of the 27th, correct? Yes. Jamie, I think you had commented you may be out of town that week, but we yeah. can get it planned and if you are not here, we'll make it. I would maybe propose we don't do Tuesday. Is there any harm if we moved it to the first week of September? Nope. And then, and then we can still get it done before the next board works meeting at that point, right? It, I mean, we could do it obviously um, not Monday the 4th because that's a holiday, but that week other than the Yes, absolutely. <coughs> okay. If that works for all of you, I'll send you an invite using.